Hello, and welcome to The Last Caravan, the official stream for the new tabletop role-playing game that is coming to Kickstarter uh, tomorrow morning. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I'm Ted Bushman. I'm the writer and designer of The Last Caravan. We are shaping this stream in which we're going to be uh, doing a session zero of The Last Caravan, uh, a Cars and Aliens role-playing game. Um, so we hope to give you a sense of what this game feels like and how to play it. Um, we're going to get our, get to know some of our characters and their abilities and get into a little bit of gameplay. Um, before I introduce our amazing cast, a quick pitch. The Last Caravan is a Cars and Aliens role-playing game about a midwinter road trip in the wake of an alien invasion. The aliens came less than a year ago. There was a quick and brutal war, and now, after almost a year of silence, you and a caravan of normal people are hitting the road to escape the rumblings of a new war, and perhaps safely reach the rumored surviving city of St. Francis. So you have the quirky family road trips of Little Miss Sunshine, mixed with the world-changing stakes of The Last of Us, and the alien invasion narrative awe and wonder of War of the Worlds. Uh, tonight, we are playing with a wonderful group, Jamie Hansen, Ben Isaacs, Rebecca Munoz, Kristen Perkins, and Carson Wright. I'm, I've played with all of you before, and it's so great to have you back to play this game that I've designed. And that you have all, some of you have played different iterations of it, some of you this is the first time. So, so excited to, to be here and do that. Let's do quick introductions. Who are you? Tell us about yourselves and who you are. And yeah, um, Jamie, you want to start? Hello, yes. My name is Jamie Hansen, he, him. I am an actor living in Los Angeles. I do voice acting, stage acting, film, motion capture, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, motion capture is so cool. Not everybody does that. I think it's amazing. Not everybody right. does it, and um, more people should, <laughs> but not at the expense of me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's the important part. That's right. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Don't crowd the market. Come yeah. your back. Come your back. Ignore, ignore the last part. <laughs> <laughs> oh great um yeah fabulous all right and uh ben isaacs hello yes my name is ben isaacs um i am a musician actor producer living in salt lake city amazing rebecca Hi, I'm Rebecca Munoz, she, her. I am an actress, graphic designer, and illustrator, and I am in Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, you will um, see, so this is, we're being hosted by Ghostlight RPGs, great organization who we've all been doing role-playing games with since the pandemic, it's been awesome. Um, and if you look at like, I don't know, like 80% of the streams, you're going to see some of Rebecca's amazing artwork. Uh, it's really habitual. <laughs> It's an, it's an addiction. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, uh, Kristen. Hi. Uh, my name is Kristen Perkins. I use she, her pronouns. I am a current library worker and also independent academic, soon to no longer be independent, so I'm going back to grad school. I live in New York. going to be dependent. I'm going to be dependent on a university. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So exciting. And Carson. Yes. Hello, I'm Carson Wright. I live in New York. I teach uh, the theater to ninth graders. I hope for the end of the year so soon. We're so close. Um, and play a lot with Ghostlight. It's a lot of fun. And I'm enjoying another opportunity to play Ted's game. Yeah. And you're also our producer and technical director. Oh, sure. You're responsible right. for all the cool over right. overlay, all uh -huh. the other stuff. Your There's a, uh, yeah, what am I not responsible for? I guess the intro video uh, is from... <laughs> oh, yeah, put that me together? and our our friend David John Banks, who's a great yes. filmmaker and friend who lives here in the city. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. But if yeah. anything goes wrong, it wasn't, it was Jamie, probably. <laughs> Most likely. Like, technically, yeah. wise. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I had no idea how anyway. spread out we were. Yes. So cool. Oh, this is a, 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 a game about crossing the United States, and we represent every we're time zone in the yeah. continuous we're United States. We're literally scattered. I was like, <laughs> it's amazing. I did not put that together yeah. until just now. I was just like, huh. Yeah. Yep. That's why all my all my messages are like, all right, this is going to be at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, I 6 p.m. Mountain Time. like <laughs> super <laughs> angel or something. Like, I was like, why is he giving so many details? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're all I love there. Like, you know. It's great. Um, <laughs> Should I get us our um, our content warning and sort of yes. intro to the to our starter video? Sweet. Sounds perfect. So 
in terms of a content warning, um, Lost Caravan is pretty family friendly. I mean, as family friendly as a uh, destructive apocalypse can be. Um, you know, it's uh, there's not going to be visceral violence. There's not going to be intense sexuality, body horror. And, you know, I, I don't want to say too much, but these aren't those kind of aliens. Um, what you will see is <laughs> post-apocalyptic melancholy and devastation, ruined towns, dead bodies, as well as just like reliving family trauma. You know, if that's triggering for you, just to be aware that's going to happen. So, put on your thickest winter coat, get in the car, and join us in the last caravan. The aliens came less than a year ago. The war was quick and brutal, but in the end, nobody won. The cities were toast, so we spent months out in the backwoods, surviving. There's a war brewing. We've had to pack everybody up. We're headed your way now. It'll be a dangerous journey, and this winter is as deep as I've ever seen. We could use you. All we've got is a car, each other, and the road. Hello, and welcome back. Normally we would jump in narratively, but let's start by getting a sense of our characters and the world that we live in. So I'm going to give us a little bit out of the book here, which is... Everyone experienced the two months war. There was no escaping it. It began with a shape high in orbit, something so huge that it covered one third of the stars in the sky. It showed up in Europe first in the middle of the night. Nations peppered it with nukes, but the shape flung them away like hot potatoes, making a fireworks show above the planet. Confused people in crowded neighborhoods cheered and clapped. And then the world started ending. So, our characters are a family of people who have survived the two months war, who have been sort of keeping themselves alive over the last few months, and who are will at the beginning of our narrative start setting out on a journey from the East Coast across the, the West Coast in search of a new home. So let's talk about our characters. I think we we all have sort of a sense of who we want to play and the the imprint, the character imprint, which is sort of the term we use for class that we want to use. Um, so let's let's dive in start talking about our characters and we can um uh, we can sort of start creating those and get to work on our on our character sheets um who would like to go first and tell us who they're thinking of playing my character bill um bill harper um is uh 50 years old has lived um some hardship in his life having lost his son teenage son 16. Um, I can ease off the music a smidge. I guess you don't like beautiful things, Kate, but I get it. Okay. <laughs> and I hear you. I hear you. Um, it's just those beautiful when it leans into that bading bong. It's great. Yeah, anyway, really um, nice, yeah. yeah, having lost his son Tyler at 16, um, part of that journey has been a real deep, like, crystallization of some, um, like, uh conspiracy theorist type behavior which was probably growing up more just kind of interesting and fun and a little bit quirky and as he got older and lost his son um that's like really really been a um sort of a place he's dived deep into to look for explanations and answers as to why he was um taken um and uh and sort of believed that his death is 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 not as it seemed as the doctors might call it um you know cancer it's it's more than that likely which um you know has probably caused some issues um issues in the family for certain and as for himself personally but has um continued to leave pretty confidently in his life and his beliefs and is now forced to kind of get back and reconcile with maybe family members that he's um pushed away in some ways yeah this this carson this is such a good encapsulation of i think what's really essential about char uh, characters in the last caravan which is that these are normal people put to the test by incredibly trying circumstances like these are not we were just talking before we jumped on the stream about superheroes like this is we are not the x-men we are not these like super important powerful people it's instead this like just normal people trying to make trying to get by 
and uh, and I, I yeah, and I think we care. We talk a lot about it in the book and a lot in the in the way we play the game. We talk about relationships and how essential those are. Like it's such an intimate game of traveling across a country together. Um, so mechanically, we are playing the kin uh, caravan imprint. That's sort of the, the the type of group that we are. So most of the people in this group are going to be related to each other in some way. Um, so then the next thing we're choosing is our character imprint. There are currently six, the wrench, the lookout, the, oh gosh, I gotta have the, the list of them. Uh, we've got the, the bandage, the bruiser, the lookout, the stargazer, the talker, and the wrench. Um, so each of those are just sort of general, the kinds of roles that people might play during a, a, uh, an apocalypse. So who are you leaning for towards our, um, for, for our friend Bill? Yeah, I think, um, you know, this is interesting playing around, of course, with the imprints, um, seeing the stargazer is described as a curious researcher and scientist. I think Bill would definitely describe himself as a researcher and scientist <laughs> in some fashion, though his training is probably more, um, you know, not exactly in those terms. I mean, he's yeah, an intelligent like individual, which probably makes yeah. it worse in this case but uh -huh. yeah, um, yeah. Uh -huh. so in that case the stargazer seems like the one who is um uh where i'm leaning toward as somebody interested in the conspiracies of what came from space what's been here and what might still be coming um and so i'm choosing yeah. the stargazer imprint for bill cool that's very cool um so let's um, let's keep going around the group and get everybody in their sense of their character, and then we can start doing sort of the more character creation about choosing your gambit, powers, and all that for each uh, individual. So, love that. Thanks for starting us out, Carson. Uh, who, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Yeah. Um, I've been thinking I'm going to play um, a man named Randy, who's Bill's little brother. Um quite a bit younger than Bill, 14 years younger than Bill um, in my mid thirties. Randy was a, like the only employed uh, firefighter in a small rural volunteer fire department in, mm. we were thinking Western West Virginia or some, somewhere out in the hills yeah. where yeah, sure. there aren't many cities, things are spread out and the only firefighting apparatus that this community has is this group of ragtag volunteers and so i i guess i would uh counter that these people aren't heroes because firefighters are heroes that's but right I, I i would say that randy wasn't a very good one in in uh -huh. in the in the 10 years that randy led the volunteers their record was perfect with zero deaths and zero buildings saved everything burned all the way <laughs> to the ground um, incredible <laughs> yeah, but just kind of going for the, I don't know, stayed, stayed home, taking care of mom, lived with yeah. mom, continued to live in mom's house and just kind of chill Billy mode, not super driven, not super concerned about career or anything like that. Just kind of yeah. holding it down, fighting fires, driving the rural roads. Yeah, I love that. What so, uh, character imprint were you thinking? Yeah, go ahead. I was leaning towards the bruiser imprint. The bruiser is kind of the 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 one who bruises. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, it's, it's, he it's, is it's, the it's, one it's, who it's bruises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, a tough fighter and protector. And so I think what I like about the firefighters is they can lean into the protecting angle specifically and like getting people out of trouble kind of thing. It seems very fun. Yeah. Very cool. Love it. All right. Uh, who's next? I'll go, um, partly because I'm thinking about being the same generation as Bill and Randy, so siblings to both of them, um, mm -hmm. and and uh, sort of being the middle sibling, being in my middle 40s, um, in between the two of them, playing a character called Francis Harper, um, who uh, worked as a radio producer, I'm going to say for NPR, because why not, NPR in D.C. before the alien invasion. Um, I, I'm, I'm picturing her, her name is Frances, I'm picturing her looking a little like Frances McDormand, but like a youngish Frances McDormand in her 40s, but with the classic pixie cut of the slightly older Frances and then mm -hmm. glasses, um, and like very much a go-getter. Like she's the one who kind of escaped 
Virginia and the siblings small town living, went to a good college, like was really career oriented, really driven. Um, and is sort of sort of in this post-apocalyptic world, compulsively still trying to make radio, trying to get like news out there, trying to be connected to other people. Um, yeah, that's who I'm thinking about. Cool, awesome. And I feel like our radio producer leads towards a certain imprint. It does. So <laughs> the imprint I'm looking at is the Cocker, the charismatic cool. negotiator and li liaison. Um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and I'm already, you know, we, we talked about this a little bit before, but I, I really love already the idea of the interplay between these siblings where you have specifically a conspiracy theorist and an NPR producer. <laughs> That's a, yeah. really fun, a fun combo. Um, Both dedicated to truth or what they perceive yeah. as true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. To yeah, truth versus facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's really fun. So... Um, yeah, let's hear about Ava. Okay, uh, so I'm uh, going to play Ava Rhodes Harper, who is actually Francis's daughter. Um, she is a 21 year old, so she is in her second year of college. Um, and uh, so Francis and her husband, da David, correct, David, mm. we named him in the chat. By the way, yes, we, oh, oh, great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, they divorced, That's and canon. so uh, canon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Ava lived with her dad actually, and uh, her dad was a very outdoorsy kind of guy. He liked hunting and things like that, and she picked up on that, and she really enjoys that. She's a very outdoorsy kind of girl, and in mm. fact, she was going to college to get a degree in wildlife management to become a nature con conserv. Con I hate this word, conservationist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <you> and <laughs> um, and uh, she also has a dog named Sumo, who's in Newfoundland. Um, and now when all of this went down, her dad went to go pick her up from the college, but she wasn't there. And um, uh, that's because she, she dropped out and didn't tell him. And so he went to go get her. She wasn't there and he died because like uh, alien invasion. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so now she's stuck with her mom who she does not exactly have a very strong relationship with. She has a, a bit of a stronger relationship with like her uncle Randy and a little bit with Bill kind of, but her mom and her aren't exactly besties. And so, yeah. um, cool. It makes things a little, it makes the road trip a little awkward, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah. And so because she likes hunting and everything, she's, uh, I was looking at doing the lookout. Cool. Yeah. And then there's a special ability that gets you a dog. <laughs> so that's the so sumo. So sumo is, is justified mechanically. That's justified. Great. I get the dog. <laughs> yeah, Essential yeah, mechanically uh, almost. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> say. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it might yeah. have been the very thing that made me decide to build this character was I was like, oh, you get to have a dog. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Great. I'm so, yeah, <laughs> so good. Do you have a sense of um, where she was at college? Like, I think if it was attacked by the aliens, it's probably more likely to have been a major city, but I don't know if yeah. you did. Yeah, you have a thought? Um, let's see. Because let's see. Because grandma I, was I think, in West Virginia, right? Yeah, I think so... we're going to want to be placed probably on the eastern end of West Virginia. I was uh, looking at... Um, the area around Nathaniel Mountain, um, which is a little bit north of Shenandoah uh, National Park. Just in terms of where we've got other regions in the game that we'd want to potentially have uh, access to. Yeah, let's say, let's see. Because you could easily be DC. It's like, obviously, like, you know. Yeah, we can, yeah, there. like, that, that'd be the easiest thing is, um, mm -hmm. yeah. This is showcasing one of my favorite, uh, it's a sort of natural outgrowth of the game, which is that you spend a lot of time on Google Maps, <laughs> um, <laughs> looking at looking at North America. Going, oh, what's going Let's on see. over here? She could be in Pittsburgh too. That's a you know, crummy little town that I happen to be from. No, I love Pittsburgh actually. Um, yeah, we could say she was going to Georgetown, Georgetown University. Sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Um, the funny thing about cool. that is George Georgetown's DC, right? It is. Yeah. I know this. Yes. Yes. I, 
I, I think it's funny if um, Ava and Francis were in the same town, but just like never actually got together. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ooh, oh, oh that's, that's rough. right. Oh, God, you're right. Yeah, because I'm in yeah. DC. Yeah, they just yeah. did not ever yeah. make the effort to yeah, connect. Yeah, the gulf yeah. between them was not geographical; it was personal. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that hurts. I love it. Cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ouch. The pain. Um, awesome. And that leaves the fifth member of our party, who, if, if, from our discussions before, is not a member of this family. Is not a member of the family. I yes. uh, am special and uh, <laughs> different <laughs> in every way. It's uh, a unicorn. That's right. <laughs> you, no, um, I, uh, my character is, uh, name is Laurie Home. He's uh, going to be 21 and he mm. is going, he's from the UK and uh, was in a long-term relationship. And then all of a sudden his girlfriend uh, up and moved to the US to attend a college on the West Coast, kind of disrupting what he thought his life was going to be. And mm. he didn't really know exactly why and so he reached out to one of the only people he knew in america which was a colleague of his parents which is francis and mm. uh was able to get her to agree to give him a place to stay kind of uh overnight hopping back and forth um before going back across the pond better than mm. no once uh and <laughs> then he was actually in the air as the war began and he has a blank period um uh, sort of indeterminate time where they were in the air and then the next thing he knows the plane is on the ground um and the world is essentially ended and um he's lost he's lost sight of sort of he can't get in touch with his family the only person he knows and the only place he knows is francis's house so he is able to find Francis and sort of sticks with her as the only people, the only person in the world that he knows anymore. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, so cool. in terms of character imprint, I was thinking of playing Bandage, uh, insightful friend and caretaker. I like the idea of being the outsider to this what seems like a very functional family, uh, who I'm sure <laughs> will get along great, uh, who, who maybe can. You know, as the outsider, talk to people a little bit more without the baggage that they already have. And also just as an outsider in general, I like the idea of someone coming in, being able to have these insights into the new world. S seeing this world completely fresh as opposed to everyone else who still has the old way that things were kind of layered. You mean the new world like Columbus? I do. Yeah, I do. Mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't world. like him. <laughs> oh no! Amazing. I just meant you know being from across the pond and whatnot must yeah, be. Yeah, think you know. think of Laurie as like the conquistador of. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. oh no! No! I take personal offense That's to that. That's the aliens. <laughs> yes. That's the aliens. <laughs> no, the aliens <laughs> Does it have to be? Love I love them. Okay. Yeah, amazing. So, um, uh, Carson, do we will we be getting? Like visual of a yeah next week or tonight? No, we can now. In fact, we can look at all the imprints. Wow. Was, was that all the imprints that we have? Um, that's where the only one we don't have is the wrench. The wrench is the only one. Uh, so, oh, good. So, yeah. And why yes. would we need someone to be able to look yeah, after the car? Who I mean, the cars, not us. We're do good. we really need it? Do we really need yeah, it? Yeah, I think you'll be just fine we'll without be just it. Just fine. Yeah, but yeah, we have um. We have some cool um, art that is being displayed right now uh, from some amazing stuff that I know you've been posting around and some of our cool yeah, um, so, character sheets. That's yeah. so good. So this is yeah, this um this character art is by James Fern Haber, um, and then uh, I I designed these uh, character sheets, which Car Carson is already beginning to improve. Um, but uh, and then this yeah, this cancel the layout is Carson's as well. I uh, love it. Um, this is cool. So, it's just this is neat. It's a game we're gonna play. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's a real game we're gonna play. So um, if you look at one of these sheets, you see. Let's look at the sort of center right, and it says gambits, and you see a bunch of actions, um, and then on next to them you see four dots a piece. So 
this is a this is the really where this game is sort of cla- we we've been classifying it a bit as a forged in the dark game so similar to blades in the dark by john harper which is now you know eight years later a classic of um of tabletop role-playing games it's awesome um basically if you look at those those things on the right you see how many dots you have filled in that's how many d6s you get to roll when you take that action Basically, whenever you try something difficult in the game um, that you know has an uncertain outcome, you're probably going to be doing one of these actions, and uh, and the way that you roll will determine your success. If you the highest number you roll is a six, you have a clean success. If it's a four or five, it's a partial success um, with trouble. And if it's a one, two, or three, you get you you got trouble right here in River City. Um, so that's, uh, that's how it goes. Um, also important to note that the Blades in the Dark is the, uh, is the game that we play, uh, that some of us are involved in, in another stream on Ghost RPGs, a-, a Blades in the Dark stream in which we play as Smugglers, which is the group that nobody ever plays in Blades. So just saying we're cool and special, please watch our thing if you want, whatever. They're so also- So important to just- note that this family's last name in this game is is Harper because we love Josh. <laughs> it definitely wasn't an accident at all. Um, <laughs> so now um, each imprint starts with a couple of dots filled in. Um, they don't have that on that version, but um, the lookout, our friend Ava, starts with one dot in precision shooting, two dots in search and survey, and one dot in sneak around. Um, then our talker starts with two in, uh, uh, as you'd expect, talk it out, one in be the boss, and one in search and survey. Our, uh, our bruiser starts with two in fight under pressure, which is sort of our melee combat, um, one in be the boss, and one in drive a car. Then uh, our bandage gets a a sort of diverse set. You get one in Talk It Out, one in Search and Survey, one in Be the Boss, and one in Rig and Repair Stuff. Ah, the Mario. Okay. Yeah, (laughs) you are the Mario. Welcome. And then the the Stargazer gets two in Do Science, one in Harmonize with Alien Stuff, and one in Rig and Repair Stuff. So Do Science is sort of a broad analytical tool that's, you know, not going to apply in super high stakes or not, not high stakes, but high speed uh, interactions, but it's going to involve more analysis and uh, measurements, even if it is not, you know, it it can still be conspiracy science, but it's science all the same. Um, It's called doing science for a reason here. (laughs) Sorry, just just clarifying again. Uh, I, I got two in do science, one in harmonize with alien stuff, and then one in rig and repair. That's correct. Yep, that's okay, right. Thank you. So then on top of that, each one of you is going to get four additional dots to place how you wish, except for the fact that you can't put anything, you can't give anything more than two dots total by the end. So for example, Francis, you can't give yourself three and talk it out because you already have two. Um, so um, yeah, the, I think, you know, obviously you might want to strategize with each other about like, oh, where would I go? You know, do you have any thoughts about where you want to put your other dots? What exactly does fight under pressure mean? Yeah, fight under pressure and precision shooting are sort of the the two two of the major combat actions. Fight under pressure means that you're like either in a really small like range gunfight, like within ten feet of somebody, or you're melee combat with somebody. It's more like you know scrappy. Can I get you know? Can I fight in this very specific situation? Whereas um, precision shooting is I'm fighting from a distance. I have a little bit of control, a little bit of safety. It's sort of ranged versus melee, but there are also mm-hmm. some other circumstances in which fight under pressure might happen. Like if you're like trying to subdue a prisoner or someone's trying to capture you and you're trying to wrestle wrestle your way out of them, that also would be fight under pressure. Mm, okay. Yeah. Now, Ted. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that uh, Randy is the only person that knows how to drive a car, I believe, right? So- <laughs> the only one with dots and drive with a, a dot car. And how to so mechanically, how does that affect us? That's if a great only question. Only one person has a dot and drive a car. <laughs> yeah. So the drive a car skill is basically going to be any circumstance where the outcome of you driving a car is uncertain, and you need to use a car for, in, a, in a situation that's dangerous. So, like, if you're on like a you know a dangerous road and something bad, everyone can do any of the actions. 
But if you have zero dots, you roll two dice and take the lower number. Um, and so basically Randy is um, good at driving a car either in a difficult circumstances or possibly more likely with the fire truck getting something somewhere where it doesn't it doesn't necessarily fit um, or whatever. <laughs> um, so so yeah, um, getting yeah drive a car can give you more options. Like for example, uh, one of the bruiser powers, uh, bruiser special abilities is rally driver. Is while driving, you can inflict damage on your own vehicle to disable an enemy land vehicle of your size or smaller, or drive successfully through a normally impassable obstacle or small area. Um, so that's yeah. sort of the the bruiser's idea is that they like they can use a car as a weapon um, or as a, a path making device. So yeah. So folks can still drive. We assume that everybody has their driver's license, um, unless a character wants to not have them. So but. what are folks thinking right now? Because currently I'm feeling, you know, just generally, it would make sense in some ways to take some precision shooting for Bill. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and a, maybe one be the boss. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I was thinking uh, I would put two dots into rig and repair and just sort yeah. of I think it's great. Care. And 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 one additional dot in drive the car mm-hmm. so that nice. I don't know maybe we're driving my ride or something. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um I was thinking of putting one in rig and repair and another one in sneak around and then fight under pressure just cuz like you know she used to go out hunting with her dad so I figure she's yeah. she's a little handy she's a little you know independent like she can she can she can fix stuff she can handle that sort of stuff and be sneaky. Yeah, I like that. It's very cool. If I was tracking it right, I don't think anyone has Lion Trip right now. No. And I feel like Frances is a little manipulative. Like she can, yeah. at least. Yeah. So I was yeah. thinking of putting two in Lion Trip because I have zero right cool. now. Yeah. Um, and then it feels like we have a lot of rig and repair people, but she was a radio mm-hmm. producer and I do want her to have the ability of sort of like yeah. finagling yeah. a radio system together so i'm thinking yeah. of putting one in rig and repair and, yeah, and do we have the... three extra dots or four so you you start with yeah you start with start with four and then four, so and you should have eight total four yeah get eight total four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. great i'm taking so just confirming i'm doing two precisions one precision shooting one drive a car and one be the boss i think cool is where yeah. i'm at with nice. that yeah, that's sweet. I as was reflected. Th- yeah. I was thinking as uh because Laurie had his incident in the plane, I wanted to have uh at least one in harmonize with alien stuff as oh, kind of a yeah. weird Ooh. side effect yeah. of that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Doesn't understand why, but intuitively this this seems to make sense now for some reason. Yeah, interesting. That's very cool. I like that a lot. Fill in the rest of my character sheet here. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I think What's... so. We can keep thinking about that. Let me talk through some of the other elements uh, that that are on the sheet here. So, top middle of your character sheet, you'll see you got your name, your background, your look, um, and there's this other thing: your inadequacy. Um, in Forge in the Dark Games, uh, you'll have something like the uh, like vices that exist in Blades in the Dark. There aren't vices in this game. Uh, it's but inadequacies are a character's weakness that may lead to challenges for the caravan down the line. It's something that they're struggling with and something that in moments of extreme stress may appear. And that also you can use, uh, basically, if you cause trouble using your inadequacy, you can get a heroism trigger that you can spend uh, mechanically later. Um, So we have regret, recklessness, fear, compulsion, detachment, forgetting, blame, or ailment. Um, So what are... Uh, what are people thinking? I think we, we did chat about some of our inadequacies. Um, what are we thinking? I already mentioned mine because I really like the idea of compulsion and that she mm. she's kind of doing this radio show trying to broadcast radio and it is sort of compulsive for her. Yeah. It's how she tries to find normalcy in the world as it is now. Yeah, that's very cool. I like that a lot. Um yeah, and it's like useful, but has its interesting challenges. Um, for Randy, let's... I think I'm going to go for yeah. recklessness. Um, mm. Prone to boredom. Um, uh, 
uh, an appreciation of strong drink and <laughs> yeah. foolishness accompanies. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I like that a lot. Very fun. Um, I think for Ava, I'm going to do blame. Uh, she does. Mm. Uh, she casts blame on her mother. She casts blame on herself, and she's still young, so she still kind of has that mentality of "it's not my fault" sort of yeah. thing, where she's it's yeah. it's always some outside force. It's always something. It's not her fault. So she runs by blame right now, especially when it comes to losing her dad. Yeah, so. I mean, every, everything's changed, and there has to be somebody responsible for it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, cool. I was thinking of going with forgetting as uh, Laurie's inadequacy, the idea that everything prior to the plane incident is slowly leeching away the more he learns about um, how things are now and who these people are. Bits and bits of his old life fade away. Yeah. Very cool. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm excited to see that uh, as that happens in flight. Very cool. And then uh, Bill, there's not a conspiracy uh, inadequacy because it isn't. It isn't a problem, right? It's that's not that's not what's wrong. No, but there's definitely <laughs> detachment. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Detachment from family or reality or from the situations, Ooh. probably. Yeah. Cool. Oh, I'm very interested in that. It's very cool. Amazing. So those are inadequacies. The other things that you'll see on the character sheet here, on the left side, you'll see this column that says heroism. You'll see there's a uh, gain a heroism when you, and then it has a list of things, and then a spend a heroism token to do certain things. So basically, as the game progresses, you're all going to do different things, and some of them will fulfill these sort of narrative triggers that exist in your heroism column here. So every... uh, Every imprint has their own thing. So, for example, with the Stargazer, um, you gain a heroism token when you experiment with, experiment with alien technology you don't fully understand, analyze the situation through a scientific lens, or teach another traveler about something complicated. So a lot of these things are, one of them is action-related, one of them is um, relationship-related, and one of them is viewpoint-related. Um, so it's you expressing your character's viewpoint, the way that they approach problems, and how they interact with other people. And so these are all... Um, so th- those each one has their own three of that particular type. And then you also have aid a faction and make things worse because of your inadequacy. No matter who you are, you have that uh, those triggers as well. And so whenever those happen, you gain a heroism token. If we were at a table, we would all take a little pebble and be like, haha, now I have my heroism token. And then, you know, when we do the third Kickstarter in 10 years, we'll have cool print and unique heroism tokens with a cool symbol on it. Who freaking knows? Um, but uh, Heroism. <laughs> heroism. So then you can spend heroism tokens at any time to do a number of things. One of them is you can add another D6 to a gambit roll you're about to do. So you're like, okay, I really want to succeed at this. I'm going to spend this heroism, roll my dice, and see what I can pull off. Then uh, there's you can find a useful item. So if you're like, oh, gosh, I really need a weapon in this moment, you throw that out, and I'm like, great, you've found a two-by-four. It's great. Find a bad guy. Um, or uh, you can use it to mitigate trouble. Oh, no, sorry, not mitigate trouble. That's not what it's supposed to be. You can use it to increase harm. So you, ah. basically you can spend, uh, you can spend, yeah, that, the, the one typo on the Stargazer one I'm, I'm realizing, and on Talker, and on Wrench. Anyway, yeah, we're working on all these things. It's great. Um, some of these are correct, but we'll you, it. yeah, it'll be great. You can spend it to increase the amount of harm you'll do in an attack on uh, an enemy during a, during a combat situation. So, um, that's just to explain how that mechanic works. That's that's the general idea. And then in the middle here, we've got our backpack, which is going to be full of stuff, our starting inventory, and then to the right of that, your special abilities. So let's, um, everybody's got a unique uh, block of special abilities. It's very similar to Forge in the Dark. Again, what are people's thoughts on what they would like their special ability to be? Mm, I was thinking of going, I mean, Rally Driver sounds a lot of, like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um, fun. so I think I'm gonna go for that. Cool. Yeah, I dig it. Look, that's sweet. Yeah, this is a guy who's used to driving basically a tank. So he's yeah. just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. That's very fun. Uh, yeah, awesome. Any other thoughts? Um, yeah. So, what does it mean when it says um, your 
uh, one additional use. Your projectile weapon has one additional use. What does that yes. mean? Yes. So um, when items are in your backpack, you'll see mm -hmm. on our on our sheet that it says the it says in the backpack it has three columns: name, size, slash uses, and then tags. Oh. So um, your items that you get will have. Um, a size, which is how much space they take up in your backpack. You have seven space in your backpack normally. So like a rifle is going to take up two space in your in your backpack. Ah. Um, and then it's going to have a certain number of uses, and that's how many encounters you can use it in. So for a rifle, it's going to be two slash four. So you can use, probably a rifle would be three, honestly. Um, but you can use, uh, you, during four encounters, you can use your rifle for a number of shots. It's not, uses aren't individual shots. Um, they're just uh, sort of a, a more abstract sense of like, you could even think of it as like a clip for a pistol or something. Um, oh. Yeah, so, so the lookouts, there's a, the, the, yeah, the careful shot power for the lookout allows you to um, yeah get an additional use on all your weapons. But I think you having chosen your buddy will probably be- That's what I was thinking, yeah. We'll, we'll probably, yeah, having have our, our Newfoundland, you'll be Yeesh. good at. So what do you think- Sumo. Um, Sumo is good at scouting roots, gathering hints, or fighting alongside you. I think um, fighting alongside me. I think he is cool. primarily like he was raised to be like a guard dog for like the house and the family. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so he's not particularly good at much else. Um, but mm -hmm. when he thinks that I'm being threatened, he's useful. Otherwise, he just kind of drools and sleeps and gets gassy. So <laughs> amazing. <That's fabulous. laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Um, Cool. And then uh, who else do we... So that what that means is that in like a fight under pressure role, you'll have an additional die to use um, because of because of sumo. Um, so yeah, that's sweet. You're now a, a powerhouse fighter for this caravan. Um, uh, Ted, how yeah. does um, a turning point roll and shattering work? That's a great question. So you look on the harm track on the top right of your character sheet. It says stable and then has uh, five dots and then a slash and then five more dots and then it says worsening. Um, that indicates how much, um, that's how much health you have. If all of those, if you lose all of your health, you did. This is over. Um, the middle line, whenever you cross the middle line, you reach a turning point. Your character has... Um, a crisis, and you roll a single d6. You roll that d6, six, and if you get a six, your character becomes heroic, um, and for the rest of the encounter, you get plus one to all of your die rolls. So you sub like you take the pressure, and you're perfect. If it's anything other than a six, and you can't modify this roll in any way, your character shatters, and for the rest of that that encounter, they can't do anything except pursue their inadequacy. So if their inadequacy is fear, they can do nothing besides try to run away. If they're, you know, reckless, they can do nothing but run into trouble, um, et cetera, et cetera. So like your, whatever your inadequacy it is, it takes over. So the power that the bandage has that I think you're probably uh, referring to um, is, let's see, which one is that? Crisis Counselor. Crisis Counselor. Yeah, you gain two heroes and when another player shatters after a turning point roll. Um, and you gain plus one. Yeah, and, and you also have an additional heroism capacity for the whole game. So basically, whenever Ooh. something terrible happens, you can step in and help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah I, think it's a, yeah, I think it's a cool ability. Yeah, it's it's an interesting circumstance. Like, you have to, you know, your people have to get hurt for that to happen, but, uh, you know, it'll probably happen. Um, yeah. Uh, Kristen, I th it seemed like you were, you had a thought on your... Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really cool ones. I think I'm going to take Friendmaker, which is you get uh, one plus one D on friendly social interactions with people who have never heard of you and are meeting you for the first time. Yeah. I What I like about that is what I, I think Francis is one of those people who is really good meeting people and not very good in long relationships and like with intimate relationships. <laughs> so I kind yeah. of like, I kind of like the flavor of that one. Can I, can I, thanks daughter. Um, they ask for one more little flavor thing. Yeah. Or potential adjustment. Although tell me what you think, Ted. Yeah. I'm playing it like she keeps trying to do this radio show and she does have some broadcast range. Occasionally, maybe she gets a little bit more, you know, like there are people 
who have maybe heard her radio broadcast. Yeah. Can those count as strangers who are like, oh, you're Francis Harper who tells me some news or are those people who have- Yeah, who have heard of you. Who have heard of you. Yeah, me. what I'm sort of imagining, think? yeah, what I'm imagining is, yeah, that's an interesting question. My, my thought would be that you would potentially make the role when you do the radio broadcast and we like, it's sort of oh. like, see- who you're making an impression on kind of thing. I think that could be kind of oh, I like that. That's fun. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. do that. And so, we, and so you basically get to make a role and potentially you're making a friend or not. Um, cool. And I can do like a fortune role to, you know, whether or not the, the you can get the, the broadcast out or whatever. So yeah, I think that's, that, that's, that's a cool fun. thought. Um, but uh, let's see. Does that leave that's me? The, yeah, that's you. I think I would do expertise in this case and I, i'm not sure what that is but the narrow area of scientific expertise automatically yeah. succeed at second gear or lower gambits involving this expertise and i get a plus one is that a plus one to your heroes uh, and capacity so you can hold here. an additional one at any time okay yeah. that's great yeah um plus one hero business capacity very very great okay yeah so i'll do that i'm not quite sure on the narrow area of scientific expertise there's yeah, so many we can think about that for next time wonderful things yeah yeah i'm interested about that yeah i like it a lot i think that's very yeah cool. not sure Medi um Medi can I another... right exactly it was <laughs> i mean right yeah <laughs> uh probing that's devices fun. i don't know um <laughs> yeah so yeah. The background up here is this just um, like flavor from before the, the before yeah. times? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just flavor, just like general minder, you know, conspiracy theorist or you know, guy from England, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> whatever your characters. Sort of general Love senses. it. Love right, it. So let's we're we're flying through character creation here. Let's um, let's get our starting inventory. So. Um, Creating items, in the, so there's a, there's a whole list of items in the game with all sorts of cool powers and things that they do, um, but it's also very easy to make items in the game. Basically, you say what it is, its size, the number of uses it's, it has. There are certain traits you can add to it, like for example, um, you know, if it's a if it's a gun, you know, it will probably have you know a size that is you know X uses that is X. Um, and then you can you can refill it if you find more ammo am, ammunition. But like a baseball bat, once you hit it enough times against heavy things or hard things, it's gonna break. So it has it's two slash three e for expendable, meaning that once its final use is used, it's broken. You can't use it anymore. Um, and so that there's certain other things that exist in the game that will sort of uh, explain how those work. Um, but generally. Um, I'm curious if you have a thought of what you start with. Basically, you start at character creation. You either have you have two items or three size worth of inventory, whichever comes first. So if you have an item that's worth three size inventory, you can't get another item at character creation. So it's it's pretty it's a pretty small uh, beginning set of things. Um, so I'm gonna throw some. We'll see how this copy paste works. Um, that's not very good or helpful. Um, I will instead take a screenshot and drop it into the, the chat with y'all so you can see sort of some of the basic items that exist in the game. And if you have a sense of like, ooh, I, what if I could have this item? We can just uh, chat about that and I can give you a sense of what that would, um, what its size would be. So give me one second to drop these in here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, those are in our uh discord now so for example like for the lookout um rebecca you see and these are not everyone can take from anybody else's pool if you want to it's just there's a general organization of them um so the binoculars is size one regional maps are two and you have three uses basically you can use them once per region to get you a bunch of information about that region um Climbing gear is pretty, it's, there's a lot of stuff in it, um, but you can use it a few times. And then the flare pistol um, has some cool traits. It does harm, but it also blinds and frightens enemies, um, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and yeah, you can see there's also um, sort of a standard set of items uh, like utility knives, flashlights, pistols, rifles, skinning knives, baseball bats, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, anybody have a thought of something that they would like to have? 
Uh, w one of the reasons I landed on British was because one of the suggested <laughs> items for bandage was tea. Um, oh, that's good. And, um, so I would like to have tea, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, tea absolutely. Tea for five. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. I, yeah. I just imagine <laughs> anytime, five. anytime our groups like run into some sort of convenience store or something like like randy's going straight for the liquor aisle and you're going straight for the tea like oh please oh please oh please mm. <laughs> so, good. Yeah. so yeah you'll see so uh you can see this but our uh people watching can't the tea has it's size one uses three and it has two traits which are slow and heal one so what that means is that slow means it can't be used during the detour phase um, so the detour phase is sort of the main like action thing. You're outside of the car, you're exploring something, you're, you're moment to moment. And, but during the travel phase, you can use the tea and it heals one harm from a member of your caravan. So, yeah. So I got in the middle of the adventure being like, okay, you're hurt, you're hurt. Just take, <laughs> take a sip, yeah, there you go. Take this tea, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but if it's over the course of a few hours, it'll really do somebody some good. So yeah, that's great. It's a fabulous choice. Um, all right. Uh, what else? I'm, I'm definitely thinking... going to hit the Ooh, Go ahead. Ooh. Go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to go with the fireman's axe. It's size three. So yeah, awesome. I'll yeah. just have that. Seems... Yeah, seems perfect. Yeah, true, true, true to fireman's form. axe. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that's that's the the classic bruiser item. Um, yeah, sweet. Um, so there's only um so just a, a question about uses yes uh, so the this has it's 4e which uh, implies that i can use it four times and then yes. it will break is there a yeah. way to repair it or to upkeep it or anything like that or would i just need to find a new axe or yeah it's a good question you would um you could repair it or craft it. The crafting is is possible in the game, and basically, like using your rig and repair will be part of it. Certain crafting can either be repairing items; it can also be combining items. So, like if you found an interesting alien artifact that like had a gravitational thing that sent people sort of floating away, you could like if you had the right expertise, like if a stargazer could learn this ability as their special ability, you could craft alien material onto your fireman's axe and use it as like a, a super upgraded weirdo weapon. Cool. Um, basically, it's Tears of the Kingdom, uh, but I promise <laughs> I didn't copy it off of Tears of the Kingdom. Um, <laughs> yeah, this it was first. from before. I, I, it was from before, I promise. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway. I it's, can uh, attest. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's cool. Um, but yeah, you could repair so, it. You could also find, uh, yeah, items that could help you like reinforce it or whatever. Great. Yeah. Curse. So can I have a pistol and a water purifier? The pistol from the basic? Sorry, I, I missed some things because I was reading and no, I realized good. I was doing a classic move of me, which is not listen to the instructions. And then get mad <laughs> That's at my great. Students. Uh, <laughs> no, you, you absolutely can. So you can have up either two items or up to three um, three size, whichever comes first. So combining the pure, okay. the pistol and the water purifier is three and is two items. So that's great. That's perfect. okay. Great. So the water, yep, water purifier you can use up to five Love times. That. It's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I made it. Kristen, you were about to say something. Yeah, I think I, I, I think Francis doesn't know how to shoot a gun. So I like the idea of her having a baseball bat. I like how like brutal and funny <laughs> that is. Yeah, um, so that's a size two. And then I'm thinking this ham radio I carry around, it's not in the list, but I'm wondering if that should take up a space. Yeah, so... Um, be a size one. <laughs> yeah, so you'd have to have a very small radio to be that size. You and I had talked about, we don't want, to, want Francis to start with a huge radio setup. The, yeah. this, like having the full one that would be like really useful and good would probably be like at least a size three or four, just because it's a big setup, you get a lot of things. You could have a, absolutely a small transmitter that has a, a, a range of about one mile, uh, one one to two miles, depending on height. But um, um, maybe you uh, could... Francis, you and I can you know get a project going together. That might be fun to rekindle our. <laughs> yeah, you can Start be my technician when I'm when I'm working. <laughs> no, no, I was thinking maybe you expand your network. I'd take a show. 
<laughs> well, what about you no. stay a technician <laughs> i think you'd be best at that bill <laughs> i don't know let okay. him have a show let him i mean he, he has a lot to say let him do it at night he has too much to say y'all ever listen to coast to coast am at night the midnight dj yeah <laughs> oh dear god oh, i mean okay i can't wait at some point we can put things in the car though right that has its yes. own storage? Absolutely. The car has its own storage. That's exactly right. So your starting car is going to be sort of a normal, not, I mean, uh, who knows what is normal. You're going to have a sedan. Um, it's storage um, of the basic uh, frame. It has, I believe, yeah, it starts, the compact starts with nine storage. So you can put more stuff in there. Um, that you can use over time. So yeah, you could you could definitely store a big old radio in there. And you all have seven storage on yourselves. It's just that you start without full complement of stuff. Okay, cool. I, mean, I, I think I will then do baseball bat and ham radio, small radio. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Very cool. Um, Did you want anything besides besides tea, Jamie? Besides tea. Oh, I, you know, <laughs> I think... <laughs> it, it's like Samwise Gamgee and his uh, his herbs, you know. That's all you need. No, um, I was, tea and I actually had a question about. So, skinning knife is one of the basic inventory yeah. items, and yes. it's a melee weapon. Can it be like, if it is a melee weapon, can you use it for something other than combat? Like, Certainly. or would you need to have the utility knife to be able to do something like that, or is it just that? No, no, knife? you. Yeah, the skinning knife, it can be used for non-combat as well. It's just that, um, yeah, the utility knife is only non-combat. The reason that that is the case, because utility knives get four uses, which is really nice. The skinning knife doesn't have as many combat uses. But if you use it for other things, it's not going to take up your, take up uses in exactly the same way. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, the skinning knife is great. So, it's uh, the skinning knife's traits are harm one, close, and risky. So, um, you'll see that uh, near close and far are the engagement distances of certain uh weapons so um close means just straight up melee you're in close combat close quarters you're fighting you have to be right next to each other somebody use it near is like your pistol is near which is within like 30 to 40 feet so like at the, further than that distance the pistol's going to be too inaccurate to be useful and then the uh, rifle has far so that's up to 100 or 200 feet um, so yeah, um, that's how, and that's how ranges of weapons work. So it's pretty, pretty sort of, uh, loose theater of the mind kind of stuff. We're not using any charts or maps. And risky. Um, risky is, um, basically those, tr those traits and tags will potentially be, um, things that I can make into trouble. So like if you roll a, if you roll a failure on something, I may be like, okay, this using this particular weapon is risky. So something bad happens because of that. And so certain traits are just narrative. Uh, risky is one of those. Gotcha, um, gotcha. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Do we have our full? So, so go ahead. Yeah. So I'm going to need the rifle. Yes. Uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, it's awesome. Two slash four. Yeah. It's great. Oh, it's four. Uh, I believe it is. What's it listed as? Three. Two no. slash three. Yes, that's true. I've been I've been uh, trying even, to balance them a little bit because having four uses having four <laughs> uses means a lot of times you get to use it. I realize. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. So so we're only doing two items. Uh. Yeah. Up to two items or three storage. Yeah. Whichever comes first. But the rifle's only two, so you can get another item that has one size. I'm caught between either binoculars or extra ammunition. What do you guys think? Hmm. Because they're both one. Mm. I say go binoculars. Yeah. 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 That's okay. fine. And maybe maybe avoid fights if possible. Yeah. yeah. That's a smart Twice. thing. You never know. We're a, we, we're just a family here. We're not a bunch of commandos. That's yeah, true. No. That is so true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so true. rifle and binoculars. Cool. Um, awesome. So. Uh, if I'm understanding correctly, I think we're reaching the end of character creation. Oh, there's there's one. I know it's been it's been so fun, everybody. Uh, um, uh, so it. after as our final step here, I think our final step. We'll take a little break after this, but I want to, um, I want to generate our car. So, yeah. so the the games. You automatically start with a compact vehicle, which means it has enough for five passengers. So all of you, 
and it has nine storage to start. So uh, your personal bags do not count against vehicle storage. Basically, you have that, and then on top of that, you have nine additional storage in the car. Um, you can, uh, at the beginning of the, the game, it starts with three. Its condition starts at three. Um, if it ever goes to condition zero, it is irreparably destroyed and broken, so bad things can happen to your car, and potentially it can it can break. Um, the thing we have to do also as part of our beginning is inspecting a vehicle. Um, so we're going to see if it, um, we're going to see if it has, uh, there's any pros and cons. So for your starting vehicle, if I remember correctly, I don't think you get any pros because, well, actually, let me, let me check that. Um, yes. Starting vehicles have only three cons. So <laughs> your starting vehicle is not good. Um, so who would uh, let's have three people volunteer to roll some d6s as our first rolls of the game Woo. i'll roll one okay. all right uh. randy randy Lori, uh Lori, and ava go ahead Kristen. you'll roll soon so everybody roll wow. a d6 and tell me um yeah tell me if it's okay so four great three for rebecca and for Lori. six Six. Okay, great. So <laughs> they're basically, so now if you roll a one through a three, we go to the really bad cons table. And if you roll a four through six, we go to the not so bad cons table. So we have two not so bad cons and one very bad con. Sorry. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Kristen, go ahead and roll our really bad con. Yes. And then Carson and one other person roll, can roll our okay cons. Okay. Six. All right, Kristen, how we do? Six. Six. Um, uh, this means that our first con is a faulty battery. The car, the, the car on certain occasions, basically at my discretion, will sometimes fail to start um, and require being jumped or uh, efforts to, to get to work. So yeah, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's some bad ones here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. Okay, and then what were our, for our uh, not so bad cons, what did we roll? Three. Three? And uh, who did, uh, did someone volunteer? I'll roll. Action? Go, Ben. Five. Okay, three and five. So we've got a cracked windshield. That doesn't mean it is open. It just means it's slightly damaged. So if it was to take impact, it would be less resilient than in a normal windshield impact. Um, and then the like five a real is windshield. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, and the other one is um, malfunctioning sensors, which is. The dashboard is uh, is somewhat broken and will only occasionally give indication of oil and gas levels, mileage, and speed. It's like my car. <laughs> oh, no. Is that what happens? Wow. No, we, we are doing great. Yeah, guy, <laughs> yeah. we're going to have to steal a car. Whose car is this? Is this the college kid? Like, <laughs> Yeah, who's, who's car I was going to say, this? is this grandma's car? Did we take grandma's Ooh. minivan? It and might like... be Deacon's <laughs> car, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, her sort of old busted. The one that yeah. sits in the driveway that yeah, nobody yeah, drives. Yep. It's like a geo. <laughs> it's like a freaking geo. Um, or it's like we there's... it seems like we maybe like saw some shit getting out of town. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. fucked up yeah. like our yeah. 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 that could be good. Yeah. Yeah. That I could be that. good. I like that idea. Yeah, so something bad happened. That's cool. Color is it? So scared up color um... is it? <laughs> That's the important yeah. question. That is the important question. <laughs> to yes, me, it's a two-toner. It's green on top and like that silver on the oh. bottom. That's what oh, I, got. It's like the, I love it. It's like the <laughs> like line down it. You know, those like two-tone Geo vibes from the... Oh, yeah, cool. wow. Oh that's nice. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it. Um, do you want... You are not required to name your vehicle, but would you like to name your vehicle? Yeah, let's roll for it. <laughs> okay, great. I've got a, like a battle to, to see it? who rolls. Yeah. Caius roll gets to name it. Oh. <laughs> sure. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm also gonna I've also got but... four. I've got oh. 14 oh. names on the dock, and you could roll a d12 if you wanted. Oh, there's um, names on the dock. <gasps> yeah, it's uh, on page 66. Yeah, yeah on page. Oh, yeah, it's there. You can. Find I'm looking it. at it. Yeah, in the PDF. Oh, sorry. I dev I read it. Uh, yeah. I rolled it. <laughs> okay, so if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's that for you, Ben? When does your number ten? Uh, well, it depends on how we count them. One, two, three, four, I know, five, that's six, what seven, I'm eight, wondering nine, too. Ten. It could be shadow facts, or it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or chip. <laughs> chip shadow or facts? Chip. chip. Oh, come on. Let's go with chip, maybe. I shadow like facts. Chip. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gandalf's wild and free friend. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's really good. Because it's got um, it. Yeah. to the windshield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It started off as just a chip, and then it kept getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Graham, Graham's like, don't call it Shadow Bank. <laughs> <laughs> it was so mad. I, I, I blame I'm, that I'm just on picture- Uncle Bill. I'm, I'm picturing the speedometer not working. Shadow facts. Show us the meaning of haste. How fast are you going? <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> that's the only. That's the only advice. <laughs> yeah, that's really okay. good. Um, amazing. Cool. So that's the beginning. That's our character creation. We're basically ready to get on the road. So let's uh, take a little uh, bio break. Be back in two, three minutes, and we'll get jump into just a little bit of uh, sort of our session one. So, thank you all so much, and we'll see you all very soon. Peace. Hello, and welcome back to The Last Caravan. Uh, you're joining us for the session zero slash session one of this new uh, playthrough that we're doing of a new tabletop RPG that is coming to Kickstarter tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I am the writer and designer, Ted Bushman. Uh, We've got our amazing players here. We just spent the last little bit uh, creating our characters, a family called the Harpers, as well as their friend, Lori. um, And we'll be sort of joining this, the beginning of this journey um, as they travel across the United States or North America in the wake of an alien invasion. So... Let's jump into some sort of narrative prologue stuff here. A little bit on timeline. The end of the world doesn't happen instantaneously. The two months war began specifically at about five in the morning in Hamburg, Germany, when a third of the stars in the sky went out. A, an enormous vessel had shown up in the atmosphere of the earth and it dropped something onto the city of Hamburg, Germany, an, an enormous structure, a sort of pod that crushed and destroyed the city. But a lot of people didn't believe it was true. You know, we're living, this is basically happening in the alternate present. Um, there's a lot of distrust of the media, a lot of um, a lot of confusion and uncertainty. And so it takes a few weeks for things to really sink in. Cities hit it uh, sort of here, a lot of it first, the chaos spreads pretty quickly in the cities, partially because these strange structures, these egg-shaped structures, start landing on top of cities, crushing them and causing enough damage to kill millions of people. It's this um, sort of terrifying, very instantaneous war that happens quite fast. People hurry out of the cities and end up in rural communities very quickly. What I am curious about, you know, I don't want to, we don't need to do like a whole like set of scenes about it, um, like our Spire prologue that was supposed to take a half hour and took three and a half hours. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm curious, like, if you want to highlight like one moment or two moments of like when your character understood it was happening. Like, you know, for example, I think Kristen, let's, I think we should start with you. You probably heard it earliest of anybody because you're working for a news organization. Yeah. But what was your reaction and what was your, you know, wh- what, what happened and what did you immediately do? as you learn yeah. what's happening. As we talked about, um, Francis was planning on picking up Lori at the airport, uh, sort of being yeah. there, helping him like stay the night. And I think the minute she hears what's happened in Germany, the, the sort of person she is, she's like, I have to get to the station. I need to make sure that they might need something from me. I'm going to get there. So I think she rushes off Basically, as soon as it happens, like as soon as it becomes news, she is there wanting to be part of the news. Um, cool. Yeah. And, you know, probably, I think, you know, probably leaves a key, hides it under a flower pot or something, texts Lori explaining where it might be. Um, yeah. And, uh, and maybe Venmo's him enough for an Uber to get to her apartment, yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah, I'll see totally. you later. It'll be fine. And then she's there for like three days, not sleeping, wearing the same set of clothes, you know, yeah. trying to wash her face in the bathroom. And it's this thing where, you know, you are just walking between like a zombie between a bunch of computer screens, seeing images that people are getting from correspondence everywhere. And all of it yeah. is uncertain and confusing. And what you hear a lot of is you'll get audio and it's this really disrupted audio that's that has this like sort of harmonic 
choral sound as if there's like this like weird reverberating choir going on in the backgrounds of everything that's happening that's very confusing and strange and yeah you just get images of hamburg images of things happening images of explosions in the sky people are absolutely freaking out like you suddenly like there are like correspondents from npr who are like licensed therapists and crisis counselors are there like showing up with coffee for people and like cooked meals and you're all people are just working through the night sleeping on the floor um it's it's a really wild time and it's and it's people just sitting in rooms like theorizing Every, like nobody knows exactly what's happening people are trying to piece together facts and it's just there's there's really not a sense of a consistent unified narrative really from anybody even in like the few days that you are you're working on it and around the, the second and a half day of all this um things are starting to shut down like suddenly you're like oh we're not getting anything from the dallas from our dallas correspondence anymore we're not hearing anything from everybody and then there's a the thing where you're like oh we're not getting anything from them but people in colorado are getting signal from dallas but then you're like oh you know Duluth has gone dark or whatever like all these different places it starts to get uncertain and then certain places start to go dark and you don't hear anything from them um, yeah. so it's it's this really sort of like slowly cut, like sort of trickling down of all these narratives um how does I'm curious how does Frances react what's her temperament like in these moments it's pretty cool headed I think there's this underlying panic that she desperately like pushes down through work and especially being a reporter or you know a producer but in journalism I think she sees and understands herself as a conduit that she is just trying to move facts from the world to people's ears and like doesn't have time to process, doesn't understand herself as necessarily like an analyst of the situation. She's just trying to move facts along a kind of continuum and like yeah. shoving down any sense of panic through working really hard and not sleeping and like down in yeah. coffee. Yeah, serving as the, the sort of the purpose, your, your purpose as an information conduit and not yeah. really as someone, not, not as an, even an analyst really except yeah. as it helps you understand the situation better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, all right. Who's, who's next? What's, what does Bill experience? Uh, Bill reads about it in forums and online. Yeah. Um, first, I yeah. think, uh, you know, there's his connections or whatever on whatever channels he's in to that are reporting. Yeah. You know, there's video, there's things, and it's also very quickly echoed by the mainstream media and mm -hmm. the the other outlets and things, and it's becoming very much. But I think he reads it first there in the, um, you know, in his house on the computer, and um, and there's like, you know, back and forth about what to do. You know, some of the people are ready to go and whatever else um i think bill finds himself actually a little bit more um surprised considering you know the the channels he runs in and feeling like that there are things and like waiting to happen in this case um yeah. but i th i think quickly um he gets ready to like do what he needs to do of course he's got like a 24 hour or a 72 hour kid or whatever that he like grabs and slings up uh he's got nobody else at home and i think pretty quickly decides he needs to leave the populated areas um yeah as much as possible like seeing it's coming in from these places and like wants to go as soon as possible um i can't remember what we talked about randy um but in my mind, the first thing he does is like, all right, I'll head toward Randy. Randy's closest, probably a town or two. I don't know. I don't know where you're at, Randy, but I just figured that's probably. I well, know. I've just okay. been staying. I've just been staying in mom's house. Great. I'll head up there. And I think living there. Ava. That's right. I think has been there. Right. Mm -hmm. Ava. Yeah. You've been staying at mom's house, grandma for you. Um, no, I was at my dad's cabin, but I went to you guys. Oh, word. Mm. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Later. So I think, yeah. Yeah, if that, if that works, then I think it's probably like get in the car and go. So to, what, what, where, where was, where was mom 
our our aged mother who's probably in her 70s yeah yeah, yeah. where is our aged mother yeah Deidre Harper uh, your mom was I think west she had flown out to let's say I don't know maybe Iowa for like a friend's either a funeral or something less intense um, you know some some like something involving an acquaintance or an extended family member. She's um, pretty deeply connected to her extended her extended family. So the Harper is your father's name, her maiden name. We don't have a maiden name for her. What do pull we it out of a hat, Ted. Pull it out, writer. Let's let's make it. Um, uh, let's just make it Mc, McDonald, Deidre McDonald. It's not super fancy. McDonald's it's just normal, normal sort of American name. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I, I guess <laughs> McDonald. <laughs> you hate it. That's getting. That's On getting. A different game. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> it's great. McDonald's. What's in a name? It, yeah. All right. So the McDonald clan. Um, no, that is dumb. We got to do a different. It's name. not dumb, dude. It's not dumb. dumb. Too late. It's been done. It's way it's better McDonald's. than Burger King. It's, name. it's written. <laughs> <laughs> It's better it's than on the McMahon. internet, man. Dang it. It's here no, forever. Yeah, you're right. It's McDonald. Okay, so DJ McDonald. She's with the McDonald clan. They're pretty close. Um, but I don't, yeah, I think she, she's out there for some reason. So when it all goes down, mom is not at home. Um, and maybe she's got the the good car of the two cars, and that's why you guys are left with Chip. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. Chip is like um, my car from high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I still I think, just drive it out to the station and drive it. I home. think it's yeah, beautiful. It's yeah. yeah, I think Bill. It'll take Bill some time to go there. Like I don't think he lives near home, but uh, near he lives near enough home. But it's probably some yeah. hours, and you know, to, yeah. to get cool. up in that direction where he knows Randy is. But yeah, I'm imagining you're around the area of a, like m- this is just a place I'm looking at a map like Moorfield, West Virginia, which is a really small town in the eastern edge of West Virginia. Um, that's great yeah so i think that's where that's where mom's house is is somewhere in the in like you know the bush not the bush near there and then you um yeah you're headed there from either virginia or pennsylvania or the dc area because dc is where ava is at school and francis is working at uh npr so non-dc yeah 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 you don't Non-DC. trust that place <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's not are you, are you yeah. kidding me <laughs> yeah no <laughs> Yeah, good. Not to mention um, my, my dumb sister. Yeah. So I like the idea that I really love the idea that he picks it up on the forums first. And there's this kind of thing where like the images that get out of the the mainstream media are filtered for their graphic nature to some degree, and like filtered to like be you know to to also like help people be calm about the situation. And so you get to see some stuff pretty early on that's pretty terrible you see like you know crushed bodies under debris um you see this like ashen covered people like wandering out of out of these towns um and uh yeah it's um is it possible that there's like early footage of the aliens oh yeah oh yeah so you see through like these sort of foggy wispy like spiraling shadows you see these like tall figures that oh appear appear to maybe be bipedal, but then there's other images that are like these huge, like rounded things that like have these big, these like, huge feet that don't look human at all. Um, they're sort of like at a distance, like hulking around like a building as it collapses. And so you, there, there's a little bit of inconsistency about um, about what that is um about what exactly is going on um, yeah it can, is it the kind of thing sorry the kind of thing where it's like sees these things turns on the tv to see if they're reporting it of course they're not and he like yeah leaves yeah yeah um i totally. i wanted to add one more thing in i'm sorry i think no I think please the, this is great the first thing um bill thinks about is is like going to randy on the way out of town makes a detour to go visit his ex-wife Suzanne pulls mm. up to the house and it's that it's completely dark and no one's there and I think it's oh. maybe lucky but then makes makes the way on 
Ooh, yeah, I like that. That's a really that's a really strong moment. Yeah, you're so detailed. You're driving up there. Yeah, and is that is that house is even more detail? Is that the house where your son grew up? Yeah. Or is this a different? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Oof. that's the house. Yeah. 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 And and it's this weird thing because nothing is all that different. Like you know, it's a little chaotic in the cities, but you're this is like suburbia. Not a whole lot is going on. There's no like it's crickets, it's, sirens. Yeah. yeah, it's just normal. And and you know that there's something wrong. And it's this weird sort of exhilaration where for finally it like you you've known the whole time that something was happening, and now suddenly everyone's going to really know it. And there's ex excitement, and there's also fear, and there's also you know just other complicated feelings. It's a yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough moment for you. Um, yeah, I, I love that. So um, uh, let's let's figure out Ava and this, a little bit some of our timeline and locations here. So I think what we said was the was the family house, the Deidre's house, is somewhere near Moorfield, West Virginia. Um, and then David's cabin was where you had headed. Is that right? Uh, Ava, uh, when you had quit school or uh, yeah that was the idea was that um so my idea of what was going on during that time was yeah she had dropped out of school she hadn't told her dad she went up to like his family's cabin and mm. she kind of went off the grid she turned off her phone she just went out to go hunting out in the wilderness just kind of try and figure herself out and figure out her shit and then by the time she came back all hell had already started breaking loose in the actual cities and stuff. And that's, and so she was trying to play catch up. And so then she like saw there was text messages from her dad trying to get a hold of her. And then they suddenly stopped. And then she found out that DC was gone. Yeah. And so. I feel like it's gotta be this sort of image of like, you finally are like, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna drive back. You drive out. And like, before you even get the service to see your text messages, you yeah. see smoke from like yes. you know, not DC but from some different town and yeah. you're just like what is happening and then ding 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 ding, ding like all of these notifications start to pile yeah up. exactly yeah and oh, so gosh. it so she kind of missed the apocalypse a little bit yeah and so, yeah absolutely and so she didn't even get a chance to say goodbye or anything he's just gone everything's gone oh gosh yeah that's terrifying and mom didn't call once. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I was gonna mom say. Mom was busy informing have, like, the world. You have like uh, 50 from your dad and maybe like one text. Like, I assume you're with your father. I'm sure you're fine. Let me know if you need anything. Kind send of. a link to an article from oh. your your, <laughs> your, yeah. your page of like an oh, update no. of like, this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but there's a lot of misinformation. So you need to get it from the right source. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so you're sitting there in like in like an abandoned like Culver's parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what have you what do you do? Do you immediately head to grandma's house? Um, yeah, I think so. Do um, you head into D.C. to try and see what's going on? Like, do you get closer? Uh, you know, actually, yeah, she goes she gets closer to D.C. because she has to get to their house to go get sumo. Because she's assuming that Sumo might still be there. And so that's where, yeah. so she, because the, they weren't living exactly yeah. in Washington, D.C. You know, they're yeah. living more yeah. in a, yeah. and so sure. she went and got Sumo. But yeah, she went straight to her grandma's because that's all she's got left is grandma. Like grandma knows yeah. what to do. Yeah. It's this thing where, so Francis, during, this is yeah, just getting into the nitty gritty of the timeline. This is cool. But Francis, you, ex you were sort of trapped in headquarters and like there's a bunch of people who were just devoted to the idea of making sure that things were fine and so you kind of missed the rush of everybody else trying to get out of T DC because early on it became apparent that all of these weird alien structures were landing on top of cities and yeah. you had the sense that this was eventually going to happen to DC um, but a lot of people you like for three or four days everybody hesitated and it was during that time that like people got in this huge rush there were traffic jams but like people were trapped in traffic for 48 hours people killed each other trying to get out of traffic jams like semi trucks like taken over by sort of desperate people crushed other cars trying to get out of the cities um like it was just this sort of brutal uh race of this but you, so you get out a little bit after the main rush of that um and just mm -hmm. like in a week before dc gets hit um well maybe ish uh ava you see the uh you, you you get in 
after a lot of this has happened, but like you kind of get trapped on the road a little bit and have to drive, like you have to drive out on the inroads because all of the out, outbound roads are filled with abandoned and crushed carts. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you you do find the house, which has been like slightly like damaged, like part of the house has collapsed and like you get within close to the house and Sumo is just like freaking out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, not like, not like whining, but just like barking, like, who's there? What's going on? What's going on? He smells you and like, he like bounds out, crushes the, uh, <laughs> like leaps on and crushes the like uh, porch screen door to mm -hmm. leap out and like, and like knocks you out in the snow. Oh, in front sweet of your baby. House. Um, and just like, yeah, he's, he, he's just licking you and is like, so, so happy to see you, um, yeah. and so hungry. Um, um, yeah. but well, actually he probably ripped, he probably ripped into his Yeah, he probably bag. ripped open the bag. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so, he, yeah, he we just, himself. okay. We grabbed yeah. what we could that was left and just hopped in the car and left. Cause yeah, absolutely. We're all we got. So what about Randy? Well, I imagine that. Um, Randy was probably at the fire station when this all alone at the fire station because really only I, I imagine the way that things go is when there's an emergency called in Randy will hop in the wagon or w uh, whether it's the water wagon or probably the water wagon sure. it's kind of an old like beater from the 90s in this yeah. county that doesn't have a lot of money um, yeah and then I would just get in contact with, I'd like initiate the program that calls up the, the volunteers, the people in their yeah. homes to show up and wh yeah. where the emergency is. And I imagine I'm just, you know, sitting one evening at, at the fire station, just like, I don't know, watching TV, probably yeah. um, zoning out. And then all of a sudden there's like tons of, I don't, I don't know how these stations get like, dispatched yeah. or yeah, I, I guess sure. i would i would just hear like the 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 county dispatch like um i don't know talking about it going a little bit crazy seeing seeing this stuff yeah. on the news and yeah and maybe like i i try to load up to go and and show up to like a car crash or something of someone getting out of the city on these windy rural roads and like yeah. none of the volunteers show up yeah um yeah you probably have like i don't know if you would attend like a town hall meeting but you probably hear news of like some people are sitting here like we're gonna get an influx of refugees from the cities and there's some people who are like these democrat run hell holes you know these people are gonna like ruin our chances and there's some people who consider and even try to blow up bridges in their own region to try and stop urban people from getting out to where they are wow yeah, I think I would suggest not not <laughs> doing that, and perhaps yeah. for, you know, I I, I don't know yeah. if yeah. people are talking about that explicitly. But I think I'd get the idea that like the the volunteers who run this fire department, um, who really make it go, are not. This is not their priority anymore. No. Um, yeah. This. Totally. I mean, it was never their priority. It was always uh, just a wonder if. You know, we would get 10 people to show up to any sort of disaster, but yeah. I just kind of get the idea that, you know, all the, no one's going to be showing up anymore. So I think I would help out as yeah. best I could, but recognize that I don't have the resources to be yeah. any meaningful response at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet so. there's like a couple of moments where like somebody's like somebody's semi truck with a bunch of people and it has caught on fire and you and like, like uh, the secretary of the you know who works at the town hall front desk who decides to come help you volunteer like go out and try and solve it but like after a few weeks you know even if there are reports like there aren't really many reports and you realize you can't there's not, not much, as much to do um yeah you can imagine yeah and i imagine i would just kind of go back to i i would try i would try to get a hold of mom in iowa I'd, yeah. i i'd be like you know just checking on her to make sure she's okay i was gonna you know, be driving into town to pick her up from the airport here in the next little bit, but yeah, she yeah, and she, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no! But she, she, trip. she road tripped out. Is kind of what we were thinking. I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Weird. Well, I don't yeah. 
Yeah. So you get, yeah, you probably get a hold of her a little bit at the beginning and it's like weird and shoddy and like already like the communication across the country is starting to get shaky. But um, she's like, oh, I'm going to get myself with the with the McDonald's and uh, I'll, I'll be in touch with you very soon. You know, And then we'll make a plan. We'll make a plan real soon. But then you don't get anything. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think I would just kind of take all of the supplies I can from the firehouse, load them up into chip our yeah. little like sedan beater my little commuter uh -huh. car and go back and hole up at the house yeah. and yeah just like I don't know. and you end up basically like be you you just sort of are hanging out there and suddenly like every few days another member of your family starts showing up like mm -hmm. you know bill shows up having like raided the local grocery store um you know and is like unpacking stuff and talking to you about different plans and things and um yeah you're just uh you you start being the host of of everybody um before we get into the timeline i think lori you have a very specific first moment which is that you are in an airplane flying across the atlantic ocean and you are just in there with a bunch of folks. What do you like? You know, you probably have somebody sitting next to you. There's like an, um, he's like an older, uh, businessman, sort of normal looking, uh, old, um, older dude, um, African, uh, white hair. And he's just like leaning forward asleep. Uh, but maybe he like chatted with you a little bit about something before he, before you all got going. But what are you like? are you asleep when it first happens or are you like you know i don't know what, what are you up to i think i've um i've got my i've got my phone out but it's in airplane mode obviously yeah. and thank I'm you kind of yeah good <laughs> scrolling scrolling through don't want anything to happen to the plane you know yeah of course um, yeah, yeah and scrolling through uh kind of the messages that i've been sending with um catherine my girlfriend yeah and just kind of thinking about, all right, so going to land, uh, going to spend the night and then take the trip out to see her, thinking through, like, okay, how am I going to put this, initiate this sort of conversation? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's, like, pictures. Is So is she excited to see you? She knows you're coming. Like, what's the tone of the messages? Um... The tone's kind of slightly distant, and you know that makes yeah. sense. She's she's off. She's having a good time. She's uh, yeah. at uni, making new friends. I'm sure it's all, you know, she'll be really happy to see me when I arrive, and it's gonna feel yeah. good uh, to be in yeah. the same place. It you know sometimes, I don't know, she comes across a little cold, but that's just mm -hmm. she's not an emoji user, and like it's. It's hard, it's hard to get tone across you know yeah yeah not an emoji user that's tough that's really yeah. hard <laughs> she uses like periods <laughs> oh yeah, no yeah. <laughs> the ryan hamilton thing that period was unnecessary and hurt my feelings um <laughs> that's exactly right um yeah and so you were sitting in this like dark airplane and the as you're going there's a little bit of turbulence and the little like white landing lights come on for just a second and then they like flare this weird greenish color and then go out again and suddenly there's like a flash of light outside the plane people are like leaning over it's like it's still not a whole lot it's just a little bit of turbulence you're looking up trying to like see exactly what's going on you see something beyond the clouds that is sort of clearing as if there's like a city above you floating sort of floating through the clouds and for a second you're like is the plane upside down and as you are thinking that the plane bucks and you sort of like like go up out of your seat a couple inches and there are suddenly this like weird like flash of images in your mind of you on a trampoline at your friend's house um like as a kid just sort of like flying up in the air with like green grass all around you and the sky is like a beautiful and perfect blazing red and you're like what is happening and then you're like back in the seat and then this other image happens to you and you like look to the left at the man who is sleeping and he looks at you and his face is like this reptilian strange like visage and he grabs you with this like 
big like meaty four three fingered hand that like grips onto your shoulder and you like hear this choir there's this huge choir in your ears of this like you know music and and you look to the right and left and the people there's no longer this lizard man it's this dude everybody is looking upwards and are singing and you are singing and you're hearing this music from around you and this and and you, all of this music crescendos and you see the lights above you start to to brighten you like reach forward you feel like you're gonna vomit you grab the chair in front of you and then you are now down on the ground the plane has landed you look out the windows and it is like a grassy forested area in the middle of uh like the suburbs around washington dc you didn't land at the airport you are bleeding out of your face you look at your hands like you've just had a pretty like not an exact crash landing, but a very rough landing. And the people around you are like bruised and confused and 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 angry and it's a little bit chaotic. And you like open up your phone and you see these messages from Francis. Francis Harper has sent you $75 on them. <laughs> I, I, I text back. Thank you. Um, just sort of automatically. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, I don't know exactly how you get from this crash land position to Francis's apartment. Like, I imagine there's like people who come in like a a bus. Is, do you immediately just try to get to her address? She like says she's left the key for you. I feel like how how's the guy who was sitting next to me? I feel like I I know he's old. Yeah, I'd maybe try to make sure he's okay. Ask yeah, me. he's he's um, he looks kind of sickly and like definitely like is he's holding his his heart like he seems like he was worried about something happening but after a few minutes he definitely stabilizes and seems to like be okay um he he asks you he says you know he, he it turns out he's an american um of you know sort of, you know first generation african uh, immigrant and he says to you um are you are you okay do you know where you're gonna go or you're not you're not from the country no, no, I'm not. But I've, I've got a friend. Uh, I'm staying with her. She's she sent me some some money. Uh, I'll get a, a a ride share. I think. Where is um, that? Where is where is that? Can you tell me the address? Sure, it's. Uh, yeah, and so you give him the address, and um, and he uh, and he sort of ends up. You know, he's like, "There's no whatever's happening. There's no way you're gonna get a ride share here. We're, I think they're they're gonna get a shuttle for us. I'll tell." So, and it turns out there's a couple different buses that are like sort of off-roading on the grass to try and get to you. Some, like, people from the airline and, like, local people. There's a school bus, um, and people are trying to get people to different areas of the city, and they're able to get you, and he directs you in the right direction. And there's probably a moment before you split, because he's going to a different part of town, um, and he he says, Did you... You, you heard something, right? I... I heard a music, a sort of yeah, voice. Voices. Yeah, it was something like that. I, you, you're you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine, kid. But there's all sorts of crazy things that happen. You're gonna be okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Um, really, can I? Can I Venmo you the the seventy five dollars? Um. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm 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 just fine. You, you you keep that. Uh, you'll you'll want, maybe want to get get some food in the morning. Um, and he heads off on his way. And as you get into the car, the the sort of ride share thing, you you grab the side of this um, like the entry into this car. And as you like step up, you suddenly like find yourself just for a moment the flash of like stepping up these like metallic curved stairs into this huge space where there are people bickering and arguing and the music of their voices is so loud and there's so much anger in the room and then you're just like boom inside the car again right. so i think generally narratively we eventually get you to francis's she doesn't show up for a few days, but you probably talk to her. Like, you're probably... What do you think that's like, the two of you? What do you think? I think I'm sending her any unhurried texts to Lori. 
I forgot in my about my daughter, but like I, you know, I do have like a strong sense of responsibility. So I do think I'm texting you to make sure you've gotten mm -hmm. in, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, I've I've found the key. I think I sort of um, have a little confusion initially. Like I'm I'm looking under the mat. Are you sure? Is it which which one is it? I've gone around mm -hmm. to the back. Like. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I've told you a specific flower that you don't know or something. Yeah. Like it's under the because yeah, Kristen knows flowers. Some, Chrysanthemums. There's just, yeah, there's just some weird like culture shock of just like the street signs and all of like the little weird elements that make America different from the UK. Yeah. Um, that are like additionally on top of just everything else that's wild about this. Um, yeah. And I think um well, yeah. how how booky is Francis's uh, place? How many books does she have lying around? It's pretty booky. It's almost all nonfiction. But yeah, I think he has a pretty extensive bookshelf. I guess kind of at what point does, uh, can I, does Laurie, can he get words to Catherine or to his parents or has... I would assume that they live in London, and so I don't know yeah. how long London I think, was. Around. I think immediately the service to Europe becomes okay. difficult. Yeah. yeah, like that. You you never get a message out to them. Um, you you send some messages to Catherine. Um, I'm trying to figure out timeline. It's by the time you arrive, it's you arrive in like the early early morning. Um, like you're like getting yourself settled. Um, and so it's kind of the middle of the night for her, but you eventually, I think, probably get a message or two from her. Um, and she, like, is sort of confused, doesn't seem to know what to do. And she's, like, very, I think, probably pretty focused on, like, oh, you had a connecting flight that was going to get you out to California. I keep me posted on what happens with it, but nothing really ever does. Um, I don't know. Do you feel like you have a, like a more significant conversation than that? Or do you feel like it gets cut off before that's possible? I don't think so. I think it gets cut off and it's just sort of an immediate, she knows that I'm alive, but yeah. uh, nothing further. And um, I think, how, how many days is Francis away for? Hmm. I think initially three and a half. And then she comes home to shower and like drop into bed for a few hours with the intention of going back to work. And Ted, you can help me clarify the timeline on when she realizes she needs to leave DC, but she's yeah. tr trying to work as much as they'll let her basically and sees yeah. it as a kind of noble thing to be doing under the circumstances. Yeah, I think they probably end up within a week. Everybody's like, this is not a good idea. We shouldn't have people here. And so there's this whole question of like, how can we make this work remotely? while at the same time communications are starting to to shut down and i think probably around day six the entire long-range communication networks that you rely on to get your news out like some local ones still work but the long-range ones suddenly are not effective and suddenly your audience is people within 100 miles of dc and the whole project becomes a lot less viable and a lot less yeah. immediately useful um and so there are some people who like group together like some people start trap like getting together and like gathering and people there's sort of like these help things but you probably eventually feel the pull of of grandma's house yeah. of mom's house i feel and like i you would yeah i i would tell you sort of once you've shown up in person just be like so i i i, I need to get to uh california can we is there any way do you have a, a car I can They're take? not running any domestic flights. You want to drive to California? Is it, I don't... I, Do you know how big the US is? I, I know it's very big. I, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> there are roads, right? You, I've, I've seen it. There's movies. You drive across the country. It's a... Uh, I, I mean, sure. There are roads across the country. I think some of them are blocked. We're not getting good information. I don't think it's a good idea, Laurie. What are we supposed to do? Well, I think for right now, we stay here, figure out what we can. You know, information is power. So as long as we can gather the most information, 
be able to make an educated choice in a few days, probably. And this is, you know, this is like when she arrives home and they haven't decided to leave yet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And so eventually after probably a week, a week and a half, you end up being able to make your way out of the city and a few hours drive, which ends up taking you probably 19 hours with moments of like incredibly difficult traffic. Um, you have to, you even end up having to raid a place, not raid, but like go to a gas station where you can get a map um, because, uh, because satellite maps are no longer working um, and you eventually get to the house and that, and you probably, the two of you are probably the last arrivals at Dietra's house. And so everybody finally is back at home and we've got, we got everybody there. Um, I'm curious, just like little moments. So you end up staying here for a little while, a couple of months, probably. It's probably been about one month. So like the, the part of it is like the end of the two months war, things like go, go really nuts. Like there's a sense of a lot of violence. There's explosions. There's like, like fighter jets screaming overhead. Um, the news that you can get is terrible and there's a lot of sort of like holding up in place. Um, I'm curious, what are some moments of like, what are the interactions like with people while you're yeah, at home? Well, I, I think I'm surprised to see Ava because I have assumed that she is yeah. with her father. Yeah. So what's that first interaction like? Like you walk in the door, you've got like bags and Ava's there. Sumo uh, comes up to you, obviously, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sumo comes up and just, like, big dog doesn't know he's a big dog and just, like, goes up on his hind legs and just puts his big paws on your shoulder trying right. to kiss you. Just like, oh, hi. You're so, you're, I'm so glad you're here. Like, not a, not a dog <laughs> person. It's just putting, putting him down. Um, Eva? What are you doing here? Same as you, I guess. Uh, and I think she's kind of standing there really surprised, like, honestly. Yeah. I mean, I thought you'd be with David. Didn't you, didn't someone tell me you were with David? Someone said you were with David. Sure as hell isn't me. Mom, dad's guess... dead. What are you talking about? He's gone. I... I mean, at least he called. <laughs> I mean, I... I texted you. I was keeping you updated with the developments. You sent me one text. What do you mean, David's... Dad, he's, where was he? He's gone, Mom. He's smushed under some big spaceship somewhere or something. I don't know. You're the smart one. You're the one who's been keeping track of everything. Why don't you tell me where dad is? I was like, well, keeping track of David. Or no, that's you, not important or... enough. And I think she, um, she kind of pushes past. I think she's trying to find her mother. Yeah. Um, yeah. And... But yeah, she's not, she's not there. And I, I think, I imagine, you know, I mean, everybody's at home at this point. And I think um, Bill comes in the front door with Lori after she's walked out like, does this British man belong to anybody? <laughs> like <laughs> like having having met you outside, probably, <laughs> like trailing around or whatever. I, I think Ava sees him and just goes bolting into the guest room because she's wearing like a really dirty T-shirt, like not put together at all and this is the first young strange guy she's seen in like a week and so yes. like like probably no bra or anything she's like Shh. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 um <laughs> i i'm no i'm a, a friend of francis's she's been she's been looking after me she's been really great um he's with um, me he can't get home obviously no flights he's i mean he's trying to get to california but um doesn't seem like that's gonna be happening anytime soon there was yeah, no a shit. problem with the aircraft. It, uh... Well, I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> Is mom here, Bill? Well, no. 
Not sure where she is. Also, hello. Hi. How's it been going? I think I could guess. Bad? All being uh, said, I think it's actually not been too bad for us up here. Got lots of food. Got lots of firewood. Got lots of... Uh, I mean, as far as... Uh, as far as good can get you these days, I think we're we're doing all right. Well, glad to hear it. Rural folk really made it out okay, it seems. Yeah. Look, I I don't know. Mom went off to Iowa or something before uh, some kind of a thing. I didn't know about it, but we haven't really been able to get a hold of her. Right? No, nothing from Iowa. So, you know, right. soon that. Yeah. So I think, um, Listen, unless there's a, I think there, the per oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. There's just one last thing of like, uh, listen, it, uh, it must have been a long trip for you. Why don't you, why don't we get you set up and I'll like go out to the car and any other shit you brought and I'll bring in and hmm. start taking upstairs to some room. And I, th I think once she gets a quiet moment, she tries to call David's cell phone and doesn't, obviously doesn't get through. And just yeah. tries to call it a few times and sits there in shock. Yeah. I would like to suggest that maybe uh, Sumo comes up and sniffs Lori and gives him a bit of a growl. Like he oh. does not quite, there's something off. Oh, yeah. Like he doesn't I know like it, that. but like, it's just that dog instinct of, oh, you've been yeah. around something bad. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah, I, that's cool. I'm, I'm not, I don't have anything. I'm not a threat. It's, it's all right. I, good, good boy. <laughs> good. No, very good. Bill, Bill crossing back to the lobby or through the like entry way yeah. or whatever. It's like, oh, I don't yeah. mind him. He's dumb as rocks. He goes upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's so good. Um, how does Randy greet the guests? I think I think I'm probably laying on the couch in the living room reading some mm. old magazine for the fourth time or something. <laughs> They're great. Francis oh. comes in. I'm like, Fran! <laughs> oh my god, you made it. Put it down, stand up. I'll go to embrace her as warmly as yeah. she'll allow. Yeah, yeah. Pull back, she's, look, she's look, look her in the face. Hugging a broom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is my sis, not my estranged yeah. mother. <laughs> yeah, you're she's not hugging that. you, Ava. She's <laughs> hugging her little her kid brother. Her kid brother. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. And so I think sort of so this is our establishing moment. We're now here in the house, and a few months pass, and the. Two months war gives way to a cold, cold winter. There's debris of what eventually happens is you are out one night and you see, you could, you get to the point where you can see this ship, this sort of diamond shaped vessel in the sky. Um, it's rotating around the earth. And so sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. And one day it gets hit by a series of, uh, it, early on it's getting hit by nukes and it sort of reflects them. It just like pull, pull, you know, hot potatoes them away and they explode in the atmosphere. Um, one day, after about two months, it explodes and just blown into pieces in the sky. You all watch it in shock, and over the next month or so, pieces of it crash into the area. And so you start hearing, for a few weeks, you just, uh, every few minutes, are hearing uh, asteroid strikes uh, of pieces of the ship. And the remainder of it, you know, probably 60% of it is left in space and um, causes enough sort of debris in the atmosphere that the temperature drops by about five degrees planet wide, which means that this is going to become one of the coldest winters in, you know, several hundred years. Um, so huge amounts of rain and, it, and, and precipitation that eventually becomes huge amounts of snow and this becomes an absolutely brutal winter. And I think it's in the context of that brutal winter, which we'll have our first sort of, all of this is prologue to our journey that is about to begin. Uh, I think let's start with uh, Francis. What do you end up doing one one morning? Yeah, so I think I'll approach Ava. Um, 
Hey, Ava. Uh, I was wondering if um, you'd want to go on a hike with me, a little walk. You out in nature? It must be the end of the world. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. That's yeah, your sure. dad's wit. Yeah. And yeah. Francis is going to take Ava, I guess maybe in Chip, they'll pile in the car, yeah. get it to start. In sumo, and make... maybe? In sumo, yeah, sumo should come. <laughs> Francis isn't excited about it, but Chris does. Um, <laughs> yeah, good, that's great. Gets to a trailhead and they start walking up. Francis is probably trying to make awkward conversation. Um... I I see you carry the gun around. Are you? Have you been practicing? Yeah, uh, Dad and I. You know, we'd always go up to the cabin, and go hunting during buck season. So yeah, yeah. Sometimes well, I'd, uh, uh, got pretty good at shooting pheasant. I mean, you know about gun safety, right? How to keep the things on she doesn't know anything about guns how to you know make sure the yeah just make sure you don't shoot you're one of your uncles yeah 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 don't shoot the uncles you know gun safety is really important that's a hot button issue or, mom why are we out here oh I, I mean i just thought it'd be nice to get to the top of the mountain um but as they scale it it becomes clear that there's a radio tower on top of this mountain like maybe you get glimpses through the trees oh my god look Seriously? it might still work i might be able to hook up to it and broadcast i mean you know i've been working on the show right it's still important that people get information information is power and with power it's we can, the we can end make the world literally just came to an end, and you're still obsessed with your stupid show? This is important. People need to know to what who? is happening. To, to, to people trying to make educated choices for themselves and for their families. There's a lot of misinformation floating around, Ava. And you're the one with all the answers. I mean, not all the answers, but at least I don't pretend to have answers when I don't. Look, if we get to the top, we can maybe access the, the radio tower. We can maybe broadcast. I thought you'd want to help me out, right? Sure. Do you think grandma's out there, maybe? I mean, maybe. I mean, if she's trying to find her way home, maybe she is in range. Right? You want to see your grandma? So, you just... <laughs> All right. What do you need me to do? So you get to work up on this radio tower. Um, you, you hook it all up. It looks like it is still functional. There's a point on, this is Nathaniel Mountain in West Virginia. You see like some scars in the hill where like some of these asteroids fell in and some like craters that you pass by. You don't see any alien stuff from this distance, but you see things. There's also, as you get up in the, the hills, you hear this like, there's this noise that's been happening the last few weeks. There's this like low musical hum that sort of reverberates through the land, followed by this like sort of sireny wail, which will like pass for a few minutes and then disappear. You also can see from a distance some of these in the shadows of clouds, these like pods, these huge like 20 story things that have fallen on some of these cities. Anyway, you get to the top, you assemble this radio and you stay there for about three hours. You it's so cold. You maybe start a little fire even um, and, let's, you know, get yourself sort of bundled up in something. You set up a broadcast. You also start receiving a few messages um, you hear some re repeating loops from people. Um, there's a couple towns that are like the 
um, the first responders group from this town in uh, southern Pennsylvania has left. We have departed. Uh, we have we believe that there are enough corroborating reports that the Republic of St. Francis is still uh, that is is alive. And we believe it is worth the effort to make the trek. If you need supplies, please stop at this location and this location um, and pick up supplies and uh, and you know make your way west. So you see, like, there's a couple people doing that. And then eventually, after about two and a half hours, you um, you get on a particular signal, you put some, some info out there, and you hear a faint noise saying, Francis? Francis, is that you? Hello? Do I recognize the voice? It's your mom's voice. Uh, mom? Mom, can you hear me? Mom. Francis, we, we, is, is this a pre-recorded? Is this is pre-recorded? She's like talking to somebody off off mic. Are you pre-recorded or am I pre-recorded? Is that uh, grandma? Okay, no, that's Ava. Is that you? Grandma? She can hear us. L l listen, listen, the the McDonald's have all g gathered. We're on I seventy west of west of denver come find us at the old fa family family house and she gives you an address get get here as soon as you can we've heard bad things happen east east coast are you are you safe are you okay uh good enough we're all good enough i'm fine um i i don't know if we'll be able to make our way to Denver. The roads, some of them are closed. Bridges have been blown up. Uh, look, Mom? I, I just, I just hear, and like suddenly, the signal on the radio is overtaken by this, <laughs> this like deep hum that you, but it's like on the trans transceiver itself, and then you hear behind you this huge, like growing noise of this music, and you look behind you and you see these like eggs in the distance, these like huge alien eggs are glowing with red light. And you see on the highway approaching your town, you see something dark, geometric, weird shaped things on the road, not human cars, something else. Um, but we need to get down. We need to get off this mountain now. And with that, we will end our first session of the last character. Damn, <laughs> Woo! Okay. Wow. Gosh, as usual, y'all are such great role players. It's just fun to delve into the story stuff. So thank you so much for for giving it. Yeah, all that energy. It was so fun and cool. Um, ooh, oh, exciting. So um, next week, next Monday, this same time, same channel, we will be back continuing this story. Um, and uh, we'll in the meantime, we're going to be posting this link uh, onto the Kickstarter that will start tomorrow uh, morning. So we're very excited. Um, thank you all for being here. How's, there, how's everybody feel? It was a great first session. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Excited. Excited. It's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's family stuff. It's it's the drama. It's the it's the, the funny family stuff. It's great. So um, we will see you all very soon back in the town of Moorfield, West Virginia that I didn't know about until one hour ago. Um, <laughs> which I'm <laughs> excited to learn more about. Um, yeah, have a wonderful night all. I guess, are there any announcements Ghostlight RPGs wise? Graham, if you have anything to weigh in with on the chat, if you are still around. I don't know if Graham's even still around. He might have, might have peaced on his way. But um, wow. yeah, if we, if we have any more, we'll post it on the Ghostlight RPGs Twitter account. So uh, thank you all so much for, for being here and uh, we'll see you very soon on the road.